Welcome to this uh, lesson for CPI 111. Uh, what we're going to do in this lesson is continue to develop our space shooter program. In the previous part of this lesson, we focused on the main goal of the lesson, which was to learn about parent and child objects and their use in Game Maker. This lesson is, in a, uh, a sense now, sort of a bonus part to the part we did earlier. All we're going to focus on is adding some cool new elements to our space shooter game. Let me show you uh, as a reminder where we're starting. At the end of our last part of the lesson, we created the space shooter game where we could fire uh, guns at our asteroids. And then if we got them all, then we would go on to a new level, although we only have one level made. And we've got a health bar that goes down. Now let's take a look at where we're heading. In the new version of the game, we're going to add a lot of elements. Okay, in this new version, we have gotten rid of the health bar and instead are using lives, and we're showing the lives as images of the ship up on the top. As the player gets killed, this will drop down, and if they run out of lives, then they lose. We've also added scoring to the game, and we've added sound and music, and we've added a new a new form of explosion. We've also added um, a force field, so the ship will briefly be protected from being killed by the asteroids. So that's where we're at now. Let me show you step-by-step uh, step how to get from where we ended the previous part of the lesson to our new part of the lesson. As we get going on this part of the lesson, be sure to download the correct game file from the Blackboard site, uh, and then you can use that file to build up to the final version of the game. I'll also put the final version of the game file up on the Blackboard site, and you're welcome to download and use it, and I encourage you to go in and, and play around with the file and add things and create your own uh, cool, even cooler version of this game. As a note, the one you're going to want uh, is called uh, 5 underscore objects underscore parents bonus underscore start. That's the one that you'll want to download, and you'll see a link to it on the Blackboard site. All right, let's take a look at uh, my version of that file that you can download and see where it's different from the one that we ended up with at the end of the last lesson. First of all, I have added a whole bunch of new sprites. Um, you'll remember from last time we've got the same ship, an explosion laser, and our asteroids. Uh, but I've now added uh, a sprite for it to show the lives, uh, a sprite, in fact, three different sprites to show the invincible version of our ship. This is the one that will show up on screen after the player is hit by an asteroid. They'll have some brief moment of invincibility. Um, the difference between the regular ship sprite and these three invincible versions is that in the invincible versions, uh, each one consists of two sub-images, uh, just, and I've changed the color of the ship a little bit to have it sort of look more gray, and then we will have it uh, blinking. We're going to slow down this blinking in the game so it won't drive the player crazy. And we've got a, a straight-on one, a left-facing one, and a right-facing one. And then other than that, I've also added uh, a new explosion, uh, a new sprite to show our uh, exploding shots on the asteroids. We had uh, a little a little explosion in the previous version. We're going to really go to town on this one. And in fact, we're going to have three different versions of our explosion. And we're going to create those right now so you can see uh, how I went about doing it. So right now what we're looking at is our big explosion sprite. You can see it's got a nice animation to it. But I'm going to have three different versions of this, uh, a large, medium, and small, depending on which asteroid we shoot. So the way to do that is uh, we start off with our big explosion sprite, and then I'm going to right-click on it and I choose Duplicate, and I'm going to rename it. Uh, 
uh, SBR underscore medium explosion. Click on the edit sprite. And then I'm going to go up to transform and choose scale. And then from the scale window, I'm just going to have the size of the image. Right? And that becomes our medium size explosion. Then I'm going to right click on that new medium size explosion, hit duplicate again, name it SPR underscore small explosion. And we'll come into that one and choose transform scale again, and then we'll have it one more time. And that gives us our small explosion, our small explosion sprite. All right. Another thing that we have in uh, this version of the game file that I've added in for you is I've added a whole bunch of sounds that we're going to use in this newer version of the game. Uh, I've already put them in. You already know how to bring in sounds. The only thing I'm going to point out is the type of sound file I'm using. So in our game we're going to have a whole bunch of sounds that potentially could be playing simultaneously. We'll have some uh, background sort of space hum and we'll have um, uh, the sound of the laser beam shooting, we'll have explosion sounds going on. In Game Maker, when you have multiple sounds playing it's best to use a WAV file as the sound uh, file. Uh, Game Maker has a real hard time dealing with MP3 files, and so I, even though WAV files are sort of big, I would encourage you to use those for your short sound effects. Now, when you're, if you've got a big, long piece of music playing in the background, as uh, you actually will see in the final version of the game file, I'm not using it in this tutorial, that file can be huge, and so uh, you'll want to think about... Uh, possibly using a MIDI file or something else for your background music. Okay, so that takes care of what the new sprites are compared to what we had before and all of our new sounds. Now let's go in and start building up our new objects that we're going to need and uh, modifying some existing objects so that we can uh, get everything to work properly. So. First of all, let's open up our ship. And uh, you'll see the ship setup hasn't changed at all, really. It's, it's doing all the exact same events and actions that we had in our previous version, so that's nice. That saves us a bit of time. Let's go into our laser object. And we're going to need to make some changes to our laser object. First of all, let's go to the create event that we've cr already made previously. Now our create event is going to need to be modified a little bit. What we're going to do here on the create is uh, we're going to add our sound. And I'll play it first. I'll drag the action up to the top. This is what's going to happen if when a laser uh, instance is created on screen, which is going to happen when the player presses the space key to fire. When they fire, we want to hear that laser beam sound, so we're going to choose Sound Shot and choose False for the loop. Other than that, everything else stays the same. I'm going to skip over the alarm for a minute and come down to our collision with Asteroid 1. Here we're going to um, change this up a little bit as well, not, not much. We're going to set an alarm, not surprisingly, uh, and let's uh, we can leave our alarm to 30. Now though I'm going to add a sound and since this is what the sound that's going to play when the laser hits an asteroid and it's the big asteroid we're going to have it play our big explosion sound. So I'll select that. Then, before we had the uh, big asteroid change into the explosion sprite, which would look like a little star, we're going to change that now, and instead we're going to show the big explosion sprite. 
and leave everything else the same. So we're just changing the explosion that we, the player will see. Then the start moving in the direction is the same, and the destroy the instance is also the same. And this will call our alarm after one second, and after one second it will destroy the instance, so that's the same. So uh, if we collide with an asteroid, after a sec, it's going to change into the explosion, and then after a second it will destroy itself. So you'll see the explosion play briefly, and then it will disappear. In our new cooler version, we're going to uh, have additional collisions for the medium and the small asteroid object. For the original one, we used the uh, collision with the, the big asteroid, and it worked for all of our other asteroids because they were children of that asteroid. We could do that here too, but because we want to show different explosion uh, animations and we want to play different sounds, then we can't just use the parent event in action, we need to create uh, separate ones. So I'm going to right click on the existing collision event and I'll choose duplicate. And in GameMaker, if you choose to duplicate an event, really all it will do is just ask you what you want to add. So it's not doesn't work as nicely as you would like. What you can do is select all of the actions for a given event and then copy those and then paste them into an event. So in this case, Doing duplicate event basically just brings up the create event window. I'll choose collision with asteroid 2. And then you'll see it automatically inputs all of those actions. So now we're going to modify those actions a bit. This time we're going to play the medium explosion. We're going to change the sprite into the medium explosion sprite. And then everything else stays the same. Now we can do the same thing again. I'll choose duplicate event. Choose collision with asteroid 3. It automatically populates it with the, all of those same actions. But now we need to choose for our sound the small explosion and we'll change our sprite into the small explosion sprite and then everything else stays the same. And the rest is all the same. We don't have to change anything. So that sets us up for our laser object. Uh, let's continue on.